Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Houston Fieldhouse for tonight's non-league matchup featuring the 18th-ranked Huskies of Northeastern University and the engineers of RPI. Here in your home for RPI Hockey, RPI TV, and ESPN, Perilous Garris alongside Dan Fridgen. And, Coach, good matchup tonight here, this home-and-home uh, -home first game. These two teams head to Boston on Sunday afternoon. Yes, should be a real good game. Haven't seen Northeastern in a while. Last time they were here, I think, was in uh, 2008. It's been a long time since they've... been a long time. Bless the confines of Houston Fieldhouse with their presence. RPI leads the all-time series with the Huskies, 25-17 and 2. But they have not won a game since 2005. Uh, oh, 2 and 1 the last three. Right off the draw, the Engineers battle for the puck in the corner of their own end. It'll be shot off the glass and all the way down. This should be icing if it slips by the left side of the net. That's uh, Devin Levi, sophomore goaltender from Quebec. And he'll be facing Lyndon Marshall between the pipes for RPI. And he's got some pretty impressive numbers. His uh, 1.49 goals against is fifth in the country in Tops Hockey East, while his save percentage, which is 94%, leads the nation. Quick centering pass, steered towards goal. It was blocked by Hallbauer, but he didn't see it. As... Fontaine stick handles through the no, uh, neutral zone, hands it back for Jordan Harris, senior blue liner and captain of these Huskies, coming at 9-4 and 1 overall. The engineers are 6-5 and 2. This is Hughes on the move, Jack Hughes. Youngest player in all of college hockey. Trying to throw it into the middle. Good stick there by TJ Walsh, former Husky. It is TJ Walsh playing against his former team for the first time. Breaking that play up at the blue line. Puck goes behind the goal. Hughes on it. Watched by Dubinsky. It's a good battle to watch. Both not very big guys. Huge has a, a couple inches on him. There's a quick shot over the top. That was Yakov Novak with the opportunity. And he goes back to pick it up at his own end. Good outlet pass here. Trying to catch the engineers up ice. It'll be spun deep by uh, Agriogenis. And now carried in, fed down low and fed over the top. That was Agriogenis, the sophomore from East Hanover, New Jersey, with the attempt, looking for his first points of the year. Shot comes in, that was blocked on the try by Julian Kislin. Puck's loose, but the players are still tied up. Finally, Jack Agnew flips it up the wall. Shot right back in from the blue line by Kislin. John Beaton now, the reigning ECAC Rookie of the Week, has the puck tied up with some skates, but is able to force it out of there. He'll go back behind, but the first one to it is going to be Matt DeMellis for the Huskies. RPI bottled up just a bit right now, finally able to break out as the Huskies change. Shane Seller moves it in. And we got a whistle here, and the net's off. Not allowing the Huskies to change. 17.50 left in the first period, no score. I think I was spot the blue wheel and ended up taking the net off of the moorings. Back to the point, Surdy keeps it in. This is Rory Herman, takes a hit, but does work it off for Nikkinen, playing in his second game, Alti Nikkinen. So the Finnish Mafia, as they are so dubbed, is all together for just the second time this year. The only other time they were all three in the lineup for RPI was against Clarkson. That would be Lepinen, who's the senior and I guess 
ringleader here with Nikkinen and uh, and Surdy. And there's Surdy. You like that, Coach? Yes, I do. <laughs> now, this I has to be the first time there's, there's been three fins on the engineers. The puck comes bouncing in, and it's going to be a hand pass. As it looked like uh, Levy was tracking that well. Yeah, he was. He was square to the, square to the puck. Making sure it didn't uh, deflect back into him. Miller, Tommy Miller sends it up the wall. It'll be shot in wide of the RPI goal. Who wants it? Puck to the wall. Centering pass out in front off a of skate. McDonough was looking for it there. Now Harris pinching down, takes a shot that was blocked, and it'll leave the zone. Gunnar Wolf Fontaine, sophomore from East Greenwich, Rhode Island. Going to flip that one in. And Levi will leave it aside. Devin Levi, coach, played for the uh, Canadian uh, World Junior team last time out. That's correct, yep. And had a, ter a tremendous tournament for them. He played his junior hockey back in Carlton Place, which is about a half hour from where I'm originally from, Central Junior Hockey League. Struble off the wall. Here's the top goal scorer, McDonough. Had it for a moment before it was knocked off his stick. Now the lumbering Adamo will ring it in. Dubinsky cycling for Walsh. RPI's top assist man shoots it back around. Now Agnew a shot from the wall. Tight angle. That'll leave the zone. Jake Johnson back to play. He'll shoot it right back in as the engineers change. Five minutes gone here. No score. RPI and number 18. Northeastern. This is Jaden Struble all the way to the slot. It's finally swept away by Surdy, forcing the Huskies to start over again. Kislin shoots it down. They blow this one icing, and it was a close call as Novak looked like he might have hit the line at the same time as Surdy, but icing just the same here against the Huskies. Well, one thing I noticed right off the bat is that in the offensive zone, Northeastern likes to get their D involved, and they'll rotate a forward back. So unless RPI is going to be communicating clearly who they have, uh, it could get confusing. Creating confusion, I'm sure, the ideal. There's a shot wide from Surdy, who already has a couple of goals this year. Now Beaton picked up his first two goals last Friday against Long Island as that shot comes in from Louis Helson. And it's given away at the blue line. Dangerous pass by Beaton. And it's picked away, and the whistle goes for offside. Yeah, good call. I figured Novak was over the line before the puck. As we get a stoppage here, Levi has an issue with his pad. He's, he's got it unstrapped. Hopefully.
attest to RPI scoring at least two goals per game this season. They haven't scored fewer than two. And Levi only gives up one and a half, so something's got to give there. Kislin sends it across. It'll be lifted in. Jake Johnson over there slaps it behind. Rory Herman, junior from Poway, California, works it ahead to Nikonin, who gives it away at the red line. Hit thrown there on Agriogenis, but he gets it around to the far side. Demelis, now Johnson for RPI, shielding. Works it ahead. Another pass off a of skate. Herman taps it deep. RPI will get a full line change going. Here's Kislin. Where's one of the A's for Northeastern? Off for Agria Janis. And they ice it. Or do they? No, they wave it off. Went right by Ryan St. Louis. Son of Martin. You played against him. No, I coached against him. Er, that's what I meant. Sorry. You're one of your, your He's teams. He's not that old. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You know what I meant, Coach. There's a hit. We got a. The, the boards, uh, we got some separation there. I think something might have broke down there. I, I meant, right. I, you coached a team against Martin Slay Louis at uh, Vermont. I think yes. that's when they were back in the ECAC. That's correct. ECAC hockey. And what was the name of the other one? Same size and pretty crafty as well. For Vermont? Yeah. Well, now you're. There were two of them. Eric Perrin. Okay, yeah. And Martin St. Louis. I mean, yeah. they were. They had a good goalie back then, too. Tim Thomas? Yes. Yep. That's where I got most of my gray hair from. Coaching against Tim Thomas. Oh, or St. Louis. St. Louis. Yeah, well. He was a good player. Very creative. And he came into the NHL right at the right time. Where smaller players, right. you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the culture and the style of play was changing as far as holding up checks and interference. Yeah. So. I mean, he, even he was overlooked, right, because of his size. Yes, yes. Yeah. But yes. now it's more commonplace to see guys like that. Definitely, especially if they can skate and they've got some skill. Not to mention he had skill and great hockey sense and awareness when he was on the ice. Well, we're going to need to hear a little more of that, Coach, because we're in the, a bit of a delay here. They're putting the board uh, clip. I, get, I don't know what you call that. Yeah, on that's top a clip. Of, okay. on, it, it prevents the glass from separating and shaking. At the top. Yep. Well, they did that very quickly. That's Tom over there behind the scenes, literally behind the boards. Putting that. So it was not a long delay. Coach didn't have to. Talk any more about uh, Martin St. Louis right now. But maybe the, maybe everyone wants to hear that. I don't know. Back comes Northeastern. As uh, Ritz Covian had it at the line, but nice job touching up there by Bowman. The shot went wide from Tour Linden. Haven't seen a ton offensively from the engineers yet. Well, they get a quick shot there just over the line. Now kept in nicely by Chelberg. Good hands to work it down low. Lapinen throws his shoulder into a check. Centering pass. Nice job to go to a knee to block it. It's kept in. Chelberg trying to hand it off for Lapinen, who wasn't ready for it. Throws it off the net to himself. Otto Vile trying to throw it back to the point, but he and Hallbauer had different ideas. Hallbauer was kind of pinching down to that circle area, and the pass left the zone. Chelberg should have shot that buck. He had good traffic in front of the net. Forwards are in position for a rebound if Levi were to give him one up. That's tipped over the bench area and out of play. We're nine minutes in here, well, eight minutes in, and only one shot on goal so far belongs to RPI. So for all that we've seen, rushes up and down the ice, just one shot's reached the target. Fed into the zone and wide from Agnew, former BC Eagle. Now Struble, he'll pick it up. Stolen away. Walking in, Gagneau, a shot and a save. Rebound spun wide by Beaton. Maybe had more time than he thought there. Now a shot by Gagneau, and that's a skate. He's ready to go. Here's Agnew now. Little shoulder fake. Pass was blocked or shots, and uh, now Seller works it down low. 
Shane Seller tried to center. That's broken up. And then Jake Gagno into the corner. He's tied up by three Huskies. Finally comes away to Bushler. Long outlet pass through everybody. He's going to end up on goal. Huskies want to change. RPI has the puck. Henri Schreifels threw it right into Kislin, who heads back the other way. Odd man rush. Shot comes in wide. Rebound. A pad saved by Marshall. Oh, what a stop that was. And now we get some players being pulled off the uh, pile there. What a stop by Marshall with that left pad. He got his pad down just in time to trap it between his pad and the ice. A split second later, that thing would have been underneath him and into the net. That's how quickly things can turn. You make one bad outlet pass, and that was the D-man, Kislin. Uh, uh, Kislin. Senior yeah. from New Jersey, breaking the other way. Had no problem starting the attack there. It was almost like a four on two. Tell you what, Northeastern's real quick in transition going from uh, defense to offense. Face-off win here for the Engineers. They shoot it around behind. It's quickly steered back into the corner. Lori Surdy, Espoo, Finland. Part of the aforementioned Mafia working it ahead. Dubinsky off for Adamo. Dubinsky lost an edge, went down. Puck sent the other way. Not enough on it for icing. Surdy fanned on the first pass. Still try the other way. Good connection to Zach Dubinsky. Junior from Highland Park, Illinois. Ahead for Walsh. Working against Miller. Miller, a former Michigan State Spartan. Grad transfer here to Northeastern. RPI's grad transfer on D's missing his first game tonight. That being uh, Anthony Baxter. Miller, quick shot, pad save Marshall. Maybe got a stick on it. Tap to the corner. Ritzkovian sends it around, and now Fanta uh, Fontaine shoots wide. Kicked at by Justin Ritzkovian, freshman from Quebec. Former Sioux City Musketeer. Kept in by Miller. Kyle Hallbauer now. Broke out of a funk and he missed a few games. Sat for three, came back and picked up a goal. Last time uh, here against uh, LIU. Well, there's an easy one. Aiden McDonough, to no one's surprise, picks up the goal. It's his 12th of the year and just his 15th game. It's 1 0 Northeastern. And you or I could have put that one home, coach. Yeah, you know, they do a great job of staying out of the center of the ice, and they always have somebody back door. RPI, like I said, they've got to really communicate in order to make sure they know who they've got. And in that case right there, that was where McDonough was left all alone and uh, shoots it into a wide open net. one nothing Huskies. As it's chipped deep by Johnson, they wave off the icing. Lappinen throws a hit into Struble. Johnson pinching in. Tried to step up there and did it just enough. Agrajanis shoots it in. Huskies back off now. Tour Linden shoots it around. Bowman. Schreifels. He gets rubbed off the puck. Puck pops loose to center. St. Louis drops it off for Struble, who rings it in. Johnson for Herman. Kicked at by Kislin. Now Hughes tried to stick handle at the line. That's broken up. Johnson off a skate. Herman has it stripped away. Big hit there by Mike Isaac, and now Mike Isaac swings and only gets half of that one as it's easily sticked away by Levi. 
I don't think that was laying flat for him. <laughs> I think that was bouncing. He took a good cut, though, as they say, as a baseball coach would say, good swing. Swing and a miss. McIsaac, one of the few engineers to be making their second or third appearances of the year. McIsaac, a sophomore from Winnipeg, just his second appearance looking for his first career point. Gagno, just his third game. Helson's playing in just his third game. And Alti Nikodin is playing as his second game. So Coach Smith called emptying the bench, but a lot of guys who've been in the stands for early part of the season, most of those guys are in the game tonight. Here's Gagno. Quick shot off the back of the net. Had Levi spinning around. This will be lobbed back to center. Not a bad answer if you're RPI. You get scored on, and they've had some offensive zone. At least rushes into the attacking end. Some chances. Good break up there by Gagno. Kislin sends it across for no one in particular. Hallbauer plays it across for Simon Chelberg. He's the lone RPI draft choice. Simon Chelberg, six-round pick of the New York Rangers. They move it in. Spinning with it now. Is Rizkovian. Hands it off for Fontaine. Trying to go cross ice. Quick shot. Hammered wide. Off the stick of McDonough. Fontaine throwing it for McDonough in front. There was nobody around him. That's not what you want defensively if you are RPI. Now back comes Dubinsky. He'll shoot it in. No, that's the second shift in a row where he's been wide open on the back door. Of all the guys, right? Yeah. Maybe out the one now with the 12 goals in 15 games. Well, with the 11 goals, he's uh, first in Hockey East and third in the NCAA. That's, I guess, almost to be expected. And they hit the line with four across. Good poke check there. Adamo takes a look, trying to feed it into the zone. It's broken up by Fontaine. Bouncing puck. Tour Linden had a crack at it, moves into the zone, pass Harris, Bowman. Now Tour Linden trying to jam it in, fanning on it was Bowman. Oh, he had a wide open net there. It was almost a nothing play that the engineers just forced their way in. Great play by Tour Linden to just stick with it. Now they move it in, two on one. Linden across, a shot, oh, a save by Levi. As he denied Schreifels. Right back in they come. Good shift by this group. Schreifel's listed as the extra attacker for RPI tonight, but he's seen a lot of time. There is another big hit. But now it's a three on two the other way. Struble a shot off the base of the net. Another shot comes in. Captain at the line, Kislin. Stick handling. And he's forced wide eventually, but there's a nice move by the blue liner. Boy, he likes to dangle. Yeah, no kidding. Shot off the base of the net. Botso. That'll hop out of play. RPI not being allowed to change here. 441 to go first period. 1-0 Northeastern. And not allowing the shovel crew because the no change. This is probably the latest uh, media stoppage we're going to get. All season, Coach. I think so. You're right. Face off win. Kislin. Has it broken up by Schreifels? Gets some help from St. Louis. Schreifels gives a shove to Kislin. Puck pops to the corner. Surdy lifts it up and out of the zone. Tyler Spot, junior from Toronto, will back up in his own zone. Sends it back. And now it's dumped in high in the air. It'll come down behind the goal. Laurie Surdy. Ahead to Herman. Herman chips it in. RPI quick on the chase. Nikonen, the first one there, broke things up, but Northeastern's back to center ice. Poked away by the long reach of Alti Nikonen. 
out of Vidi, Finland. He's the lone uh, Finn, not from Espoo on this RPI club. Engineers get it deep. Now Miller trying to make a move with the line there. Was Novak, it was broken up. Waiting for it, Seller. He takes a bump from Harris. Big hit in the corner by Novak. Glove down by Seller. Working at cross ice, intercepted. Back in. Japani trying to make a move. Ends up behind the goal. He was forced there by uh, Chelberg, who lost his stick, but it was given back to him. Miller all the way through. Stick handling is huge, and he gets knocked down. RPI wants to skate. It's beaten. And he ran out of room. Tried to get it deep. Gets some help from Seller, but still no. As it's picked up by Novak there. Skates through Adamo. Takes a hit there from Chelberg. The puck comes free to Dubinsky. It's been a pretty clean game, Coach. Some good hitting, but good solid hits. Yeah. Keeping her elbows down, sticks down. Nice move by T.J. Walsh at center ice to create some space. Finds Adamo on the wing. Adamo trying to drive the net, dropping it back for Walsh. He'll spin around, try to center, knock down again. Get some help from Adamo, sent back to the point. A little too hot, that'll leave the zone. Quickly back in come the engineers. Dubinsky from Agnew. He gets leaned on there by Bushler. Adamo rings it around for Johnson. Jake Johnson, senior from Bloomington, Minnesota, spins it off Dubinsky into the corner. Lobbed out to neutral ice. Agnew's there. Engineers touch up quickly. Lepinen on the move. Tight angle shot. Might have been blocked. Picks it back up and shoots it deep. Good pressure there by Linden on Struble. Lepinen. 132 to go in the first. one nothing Huskies lead. Hallbauer, wrist shot. That's blocked by McDonough. Chopped to the point. Past Lepinen out of the zone. Engineers reset. RPI coaching staff has to like what they've seen, though, after the Northeastern goal. Yeah, definitely. They have a good response. They've had some good opportunities. Bowman goes down in the corner. Officials don't see anything in that. And the puck's dumped in again by Northeastern. 30 to pick it up there. Under a minute to go. Laurie 30. Across for Linden. Back to Surtey. Shoots it in wide of Levi. He'll glove it into the corner. Couldn't grab it. Surtey pinching, waiting for it. Beating the shot off the foot of Gagno and out of play. Well, Jake Gagno found himself in a spot you really don't want to be <laughs> when you're back no. to the shooter. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know how he was going to deflect that into the net <laughs> based on how he got tied up in his own feet with his stick. Maybe he's just trying to confuse Levi. This teams have not found it easy to get one by him. Maybe if you just <laughs> skate at him, he won't know what to do. And that's crazy till it works, I guess, right? The human cannonball. <laughs> we'll do this face off again. Shots are 5 4 <laughs> RPI, if you can believe that. Shots attempted 17 to 15. So just not a lot to hit the net so far tonight. A lot of block shots. Six blocks already for RPI, five for Northeastern. Are we missing a puck? What's going on? Something about the game clock. Oh. Yeah, they're looking at it. That's Tyler Loftus, referee over there, speaking to the scorer's box. It's our second delay. Well, they're putting a second back on the clock. 36.5. Sure. Well, that was worth it. Here we go. Face-off win for Northeastern. 
They've now evened up the draws in the game, 7-7. Loose puck comes free to Hughes. Jack Hughes, a centering pass, intercepted by Beaton. Three on two the other way if they hurry. Well, they hand it off for Gagno, but he was kind of held up at the blue line. And now the pass back to the point, not enough on that. I don't mind Beaton. Yeah. I don't mind Beaton making that play, but he's got to stay on his forehand. Moved it back to the point. This is Miller. Some room on the far side. Harris sending it down low. And no shot comes of that. That's kind of been indicative of how this game has gone. A lot of possession for both teams, really, but no one wants to shoot the puck. As 1-0, number 18, Northeastern, after one. Shots are 5-4 RPI in the period. A very bizarre stat line, but kind of what we expected, Coach, from Northeastern. They're very quick. We talked about their transition play. Uh, they turned it into a goal. Yes. Of a 1-0 yeah. lead. Yeah, and as I mentioned, RPI's got to figure out, like I said, they like to bring a forward back and send a D down. And unless you're communicating, then that's going to be real difficult to sort out at times. Aiden McDonough with his team leading 12th goal of the year has Northeastern on top, 1 0 after one period of play. We'll be back with a second here on RPI TV and ESPN.
All right. Second period about to get underway here from the Houston Fieldhouse. Perry Lascaris with Dan Friggen, former RPI head men's hockey coach here. And Coach, uh, the back and forth first period. Didn't see a ton of shots on goal. It wasn't for a lack of action or lack of trying. Both of these teams got up on the ice pretty well. Yeah. Face-offs were even, we said, 7-7. <coughs> or to thereabout. Yeah, 7-7, seven, seven, yeah. Yep. The only goal was scored by Aiden McDonough. The junior from Milton, Mass, is le uh, team leading 12th of the year. Oh, no. Wide open shot from the near circle. Yeah, it was a strange period in that way. Yeah. Looked like there was offensive zone time for both teams, but not a lot of shot on shots on goal. The assists on the opening goal were Jordan Harris and Tommy Miller, both defensemen. And we are underway in the second. RPI skating from left to right. Huskies from right to left. Kyle Hallbauer is going to shoot it off the glass, but it's going to be picked up uh, by Ritzkovian. Justin Ritzkovian. Handoff for Harris. Shuttles it down below the goal line. Wrap it around. Ritzkovian on the other side now. Spins it back to the half wall. Shot hit the leg of Tour Linden. <coughs> McDonough. Look at the Huskies possess the puck here. Harris lost it. Fontaine poked away from him, but right to Miller. Now Chelbert. Fan on the pass. Gave it away. Nice block there by Hallbauer. And the engineers shoot it into the bench. I'm not sure they're going to be allowed to change, or will they? They are. I guess shooting into the bench is... This fair game just can't go over the glass. Right. You saw a perfect example of uh, Northeastern rotating their defenseman down into the play. The defenseman, uh, number two, Harris, stayed down below the goal line. Forward came up top for him. As it'll be uh, Hughes cycling for Chupani. Back to the point for Struble. Right back down low they go for Jack Hughes. Freshman from Westwood, Massachusetts. Six points on the year. Split evenly. Three goals, three assists in 14 games. U.S. National Development Team player. Has it again. Trying to spin away from Dubinsky. Hughes. Another spin move. Pops free. Picked up by Adamo. He'll go cross ice with it. Nice connection to Walsh. She'll pull up top of the circle. A couple of spins from TJ Walsh. Ran out of time as Novak has him pinned up, and now it pops back out to center ice. Louis Helson missed all of his freshman year due to injury, his sophomore year due to COVID-19. Not him personally, but the country. And he finally gets a chance to play here in 21-22. Now driving the net. Good poke check there by Lyndon Marshall. Breaking up the rush. Here's Spot. Long shot. Got caught the right pad of Marshall in the end. Behind the goal, Agriogenis. Steven Agriogenis getting roughed up and dropped by Surdy. St. Louis. Stolen away. Agriogenis. Fed across to Kisslin who shoots it in. Laurie Surdy. Seller. Former Dartmouth Big Green. Move it to center ice. Scano. Quick shot over the top. That leaves the zone and heads back the other way. Alex Mella on the carry. Tapping it deep. This will wrap around for Gagno. High off the boards and all the way down. They wave off the icing. Rather late. Harris. Shots now even at five apiece. This is off a of skate and in deep. Came off of Mello, the junior from Stanford, Connecticut. Nice job by Hallbauer to stay on his feet there. Trying to find the puck. Eventually McIsaac does and shoots it out of the zone. All the way down it goes. Not enough on it for icing. Good pressure there by Nikonin. McIsaac a shot save by Levi. Pops to the corner. Pinching in is Chelberg. 
Alti Nikonen. Nice job to absorb a hit there by Rory Herman. Comes free to McIsaac. McIsaac drops it off for Johnson. Feeding it down low. Hits the back of the net. First one, two, it's going to be Harris. He takes a hit. Good pressure by the engineers. Hor uh, Herman steals it away. And now Nikonen trying to find it. Pinching is Johnson. Now Herman, he'll ring it around. Joining the play off the bench is Lepinen. He throws a hit instead of playing the puck. Now he'll stick handle and play it deep for Schreifels. Hit on Utsen. Back to the blue line. Johnson a shot. No, it's a tip shot from Herman, and that goes just wide. Lepinen back to the blue line, and that leaves the zone right through the stick of Johnson. Good idea by Johnson there, hitting Herman. On the redirect, yeah. Yeah. Good heads up play. RPI giving right back what the Huskies are doing to them, it looks like. Johnson, the slot, a shot. Rebound, they score! It's Tour Linden on the rebound, and we're tied at one, and you felt like that goal might be coming, Coach. RPI with plenty of pressure in the attacking zone. Well, I was just going to say, they've been putting the pressure on, but it's a perfect example of zone time offensively without any shots. And then... Uh, Johnson makes a great play in the neutral zone, then keeps the puck in, gets a second opportunity at a shot, and then uh, Tour Linden's right there for the rebound. That's how you beat Devin Levi on a second chance. And for Tour Linden, that is his sixth goal of the year, his 14th point. He now has a point in 12 straight games. The only games he didn't have a point or did not have a point in this year were against Bowling Green, the first two games of the year. He's had a point in every game since then. That's impressive. And he's your senior captain as well. This is tipped out of play off the stick of Surdy. It'll soon be one of the longer streaks in the nation. I have to imagine. Well, there's some higher scores, of course, than, than Tour Linden, but that's his 14th point. And this... Uh, 14th game for RPI. Hallbauer in the corner. Working it up the wall for Bowman. Now Tour Linden. Wide for Chelberg. Jumping into the play. Trying to feed it across for Schreifels. And he just couldn't get his stick down on it. Tough play in your backhand there. Sent in by Chelberg. Bouncing puck in the slot. Novak, another stick handle there by Simon Schelberg. Popped in the air, Bowman to himself. Bowman walking in, and he fanned on the pass. It was a nifty play to move it into the zone. I just couldn't what, find it on the other side. I don't know whether he meant to pass that or shoot it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what he was trying to do, but <laughs> the zone entry was, was neat. Oh, now it's Hughes trying to break his way in, but a long reach of Surdy breaks that up. On comes Gagno, feeding it ahead. Beating a backhander, and Levi makes the save. Engineers looking dangerous here again. Yeah, Levi just comes out, down on his butterfly, stays square to the puck, and no rebound on that play. Just a look at the uh, the juggle there. A little keepy uppy from Bowman. That's why they practice that, right? There's there's no real. <laughs> You know, translation for juggling this, the puck on your stick, except for in a situation like that. Exactly. Finally able to apply that skill to an in-game situation. Cross ice feed. That one goes out of play, looking for uh, Ritzkovian. Thinking about buying or selling this Jack Hughes, he's, he's, like, he's the youngest player in college hockey. And I'm sure there's a lot of hype around him wherever he goes. It, re it does remind me of when uh, Jack Eichel was here with yes. BU a number of years ago. Yep. In his freshman year. Yep. There were a lot more people in the rink. <laughs> I think that would add to the – I think – and I'm one of them is missing out on the excitement of this Jack Hughes. 
not to be confused with the one that plays for the Devils now. And the hype around him, just because there's no one in the building to awe at his skating and stick handling and shooting. There's a nice stop by Marshall to not allow a rebound on that try. But I think he's just lost on the fact there's nobody here. Yes, I would agree with you. I mean, this place would probably be close to full, putting aside the fact that it's the day after Thanksgiving. Yes. Yep. Well, I think it would be. Uh, I remember back in the day when we had the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving tournament. tournament. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Shots are 9-6 RPI. And they've just tied the game. Puck just sits on the dot. Laurie Surdy, who looks to improve, looks as he's improved just about every week. Backhander by Adamo. Big rebound. Cleared away on the carry by Agriagenis. And now it's shot down. It's going to hit the scoreboard. So the faceoff will head back down the other way. It looks like Surdy's becoming more and more confident. He's a sophomore. These, these are the first 13 games of his career he's played so far. He just looks stronger on the puck. Not that he wasn't strong in the puck when he came in the first couple games, but he was a little bit tentative, I think, yeah, when we saw yeah. him early on. But he's, he looks to be much more confident with the puck and off the puck as well. Now they're going to decide where this faceoff's going to go. It's all, it's all from where the puck was shot, and I think it was neutralized. Yeah. No, Surdy is looking good, and he's getting, as you say, more solid every game. Playing with Louis Helson tonight. It's just the third game in Helson's career. Uh, I mentioned the injuries. In his freshman year, he didn't play at all. So this is really his first collegiate action, but he's been on the team forever. Here is Dubinsky off for Adamo. Justin Adamo to the circle, takes a shot, hit a leg, and never got to Levi. Now Walsh has to be a bit of a thrill to play against your former team, although he's only there for a year, of course, but still guys he got to know for a season, and then now you're playing for somebody else. There's a shot over the top of the net. Kicked at by Hallbauer. I'm not sure Lyndon Marshall saw that. I don't know if he did either. Hallbauer still on the puck here. Knocked away from him. Sent towards the RPI bench. That's a dangerous play for Dubinsky with your team changing. And now it's an odd man rush the other way. And Marshall says, thank you very much. I'll put an end to this. And no real shot comes of it. As that's thwarted there. It could have been much more dangerous than... It uh, turned out to be. Well, that's the defenseman, Kisslin, again. He likes to <laughs> yeah. stick handle with that puck. I think he gave it one too many. It's hard to imagine. He has one point this year, Coach. <laughs> no, he has no goals. 14 games, one assist. Wow. He looks much more dangerous than that. He's, As you said, it looks like he's taking every opportunity to jump into the play. That's just how it is sometimes, I guess. John Beaton knows that situation. He had no goals through 11 games, then picked up two in his 12th game. Of course, he's a forward. Mella, stick handling, takes a shot. Right pad save from Marshall. Linden had great numbers and has had great numbers most of the year. But then that, cor that uh, lousy Cornell game comes up, and he gives up 11 and makes 19 saves, and it... Everything kind of balloons. But what we've seen from his last two games is he hasn't let that get to him at all, which is what you want to see from a goalie. Definitely. Gave up two goals in each of his last two following the Cornell 11-goal outburst to Long Island University. Picked up a 7-2 win last Friday here. And a 2-2 tie on the road on Saturday. And so far he's given up one on eight shots so far here tonight. So he tapped around to the corner. Jordan Harris, the first one to it for the Huskies. Hughes has it knocked off his stick by Lepinen. Harris again for Novak. And now Harris out of Haverhill, Mass. That one comes trickling in on goal from center ice, and Marshall... We'll put a mitt on that. 10.37 to go in the second. 1-1 one, one, RPI and number 18 Northeastern. Coach is here with me. RPI's tied it up on a goal by Tour Linden here in the second period. Things are kind of evened out after that. Uh, RPI really had the pressure on, and it seems like the goal kind of has quelled that a little bit. Yeah. They've lost their sense of urgency. <laughs> seems like they have just a bit. Now they ice the puck here. 
it's almost natural, right, Coach? Once you, you fight and fight and fight and you finally get a goal, then you say, all right, we can take a breath now. It's not what you want to see happen, but it's no. almost a human nature. No, you want to continue after the goal, build on that shift, and then try to become consistent with it throughout 60 minutes, or in this case, uh, 30. RPI looking for another spark here to try and get themselves going. Well, that's a good defensive play, a block shot or a hit or something. Here is Spot, good connection at the line. Moving his way in. Sends it back towards Fontaine. That'll stay in the zone. Tied up over there is Ritzkovian. Into the middle was a blind backhand pass that found McDonough, but he fanned on the shot, now taking his eye off it. We got a penalty coming up. Bushler from St. Laurent, Quebec. He took his eye off the puck, but the engineers are going to the box here. I think Adama's going to get a high stick. Yeah. I think you nailed it, Coach. Another look at it here. Let's see. Well, that wasn't high. Maybe it was before that. Yeah, I think yeah it was, it was yeah. before that because the arm went up before that. Yep. So we do have our media stoppage here, 9.50 to go in the second. Northeastern's going on the power play for the first time. And Northeastern's only 14% on the man advantage. That's a little surprising, too. Yeah, with the skill they have up front. Levi's doing some kind of superstition. Yeah, it must be. I'm not sure what Levi was doing, but it looked intentional. Mental imagery, yeah. visualization. Some kind of goalie yoga. Yeah. Between uh, stoppages there. See some goalies skate around and to the glass and to the other glass and do figure eights. He was just on his knees facing his net, doing some kind of visualiz visualiz visualization. I can't say it. Fontaine a shot. That one goes all the way through. Gets it back. Gunnar Wolf Fontaine sends it back to the point for Harris. Fontaine again. Harris. Stick handling into the skates of Hughes. He'll settle it back down again. Harris. Fontaine. RPI's penalty kill at 87% on the year. Into the middle. Backhand stopped by Marshall. Rebound loose. Swept away. Ritzkovian was in the middle. Has it again. McDonough. Fontaine. Hughes goes through him. Behind the goal, Halbar trying to get a touch on it. These guys are hard enough to get the puck off of when they five on five, and there's a one-timer from McDonough. And Marshall is equal to that in good position to make the stop and not allow a rebound. And that's the only side they can run that one-timer from because you've got five guys out there that are left shots. You can't run in. That's why when the shot came in the slot, it was on a backhand because you don't have a right shot out there to take a one-timer from a left side feed or a right side feed as you're entering the zone back to the point cleanly won Struble down low from Miller and now Chupani Struble Miller Trying to walk it out in front. Good chance there from DeMellis. 
RPI still can't clear it out. Into the middle for Novak. Blocked by Lepinen, but the Huskies stay on it. Novak takes a bump from Lepinen. Chupani down low for Demelis. Back for Chupani. Four to go on the power play. Struble. He'll just take a wrist shot, and that one goes just wide and over the top. Out of the box, Adamo. The engineers kill the penalty. Game remains tied with 7.45 to go in the second. Sent across. Chupani up top. Miller a shot, and that one goes wide. Adamo trying to clear, and he finally does to center. Lapinen trying to stick handle. Good, strong play there by Otto Ville Lapinen, senior from Espoo, Finland. Poked away by Herman, but the Huskies don't care. They want to change. Stretch pass here, McIsaac. One stick handle, then moves it into the zone. Helson tried to step in front. They wave off the icing. Laurie Surdy leaves it in the corner for Herman. Try to connect through the middle. Race for the puck. Helson can't get there. Agriogenis could, but it's stolen away by McIsaac, who shoots it in. Rung around. St. Louis can't control. Herman. McIsaac sends it back to the point. Johnson. Surdy likes to shoot from over here. Nice spin move by Laurie Surdy. Takes a shot over the top. Levi had to deal with Herman in front. Hand it off to McIsaac. He's got some room. Pulls it back. Takes a shot right on. And a save by Levi. No rebound given up here. Surdy might want to take a little bit of elevation off that point shot. You got guys in front of the net. And the last thing you want is to get one rung, rung off your bell in front of the net. Yeah, he's got, he's got a friend in there. <laughs> Face off, worked backwards by the Huskies. Miller trying to clear it out off the skate of Walsh, and the engineers keep it in. Sent around behind, this is Harris. Touch pass from McDonough. Ritzkovian, rink wide, shot comes in, pad save, rebound swept away by Dubinsky. RPI has three if they hurry. Davinsky sends it across for Walsh. Tough handle. In front. Adamo a shot. Saved by Levi, and he holds on again. That was a well-worked three-on-two for RPI, but again, Devin Levi was there to make the stop. No question. Nice play by Walsh getting it on the flank. You got Adamo going to the net. He's strong on his stick. It's on the ice, and he just gets a redirect, and, of course, Levi's there for the save. That's back-to-back -back rushes. The engineers look real good on the attack there, only to be thwarted by one of the top net miners in the country. Under six to go, second period. Clean win for RPI, Hallbauer walking his way in. Centering pass right on in front, he found Bowman. And I think Nick, Nick just missed the net there. Hallbauer sends it backwards for Chelberg. Move back along for Novak, he'll dump it in on the cross corner exchange. Chipani had it stolen away. Sent for Linden. Another cross ice pass, a dangerous one, but kept on moving by Lapinen. Little drop pass for Otto Ville. Back to Bowman. Centering try broken up. Another chance there is blockered away. As that was Spot, who started skating without the puck, allowed the engineers to take it back <laughs> over again. Lapinen, or excuse me, Linden. Sends it cross ice, but a good stick there by Hughes. Breaks it up, and now another one. And now Hughes has a chance to break into the zone. Takes a shot from a tight angle, and the puck pops away. Back in deep it goes for Novak. He gets jostled by Hallbauer, stays on it. Good stick by Seller to break it up, and the engineers move to center. Harris takes a hit from Shane Seller. Beaton trying to find it. Harris pinned up again. Finally comes loose to Bushler. Bushler just chips it in. Surdy plays it around for Seller. He'll lob it high in the air out to center. Rolling puck in front of the RPI bench. Whacked at to Fontaine. Left there for McDonough. 
McDonough driving the net. He'll wrap his way around. McDonough takes a look. Turns and shoots. That's blocked. Schreifel's ahead for Helson, and he'll slow things up. Trying to flip it up the wall, but that's broken up, and now Demelis has it for the Huskies. For a long time here without a whistle. We have 3.40 left in the second period. Back and forth they go. Dubinsky chips it off the glass and in deep. Adamo with a big hit there by Miller. Spot has it knocked away. Walsh down low. Justin Adamo on the carry. He'll cycle. It comes down off the dasher behind the goal. High off the glass now to center ice. Bouncing puck picked up Agnew. And Jack Agnew will send it right back in. It's been a fascinating territorial game, Coach. Both teams having extended possessions here, and then we got some back and forth. Yeah, not a lot of whole, whole lot of shots to speak of. Again. <laughs> Sound kind of like a broken record there, but the puck sure is traveling. Bowman sends it right back in. Levi shoots it around. That'll be cleared to center just off the bench. It was Utsen, and he'll shoot it in. Or Outsen, excuse me. Hallbauer has it now for the Engineers. Nice move to get away from one, and maybe one too many moves as it's pried away from him. Shelberg over to get it. He chips it off the wall for McIsaac. Tour Linden has the lone RPI tally. He'll shoot it in and get a change. Back to the point it goes. Hallbauer makes a move, pulls it back, takes a shot. Right pad saved by Levi. Thrown off the back of the net. It pops out front, and St. Louis clears it out of immediate danger, but the engineers keep it in the zone. Herman. Schelberg flips it on goal and hoping that the... Six-foot Levi couldn't see that fluttering puck, but he certainly did and holds on for a whistle. Yeah, he's certainly tracking the puck. That's no question there. <laughs> he's got a couple of – well, look at the shot, Coach. He's got a couple of gloves and bodies yeah. to deal with, but he's able to see it through traffic. There's a – Face-off coming up in the northeastern zone. Shots are 15-14 RPI. With a minute 45 left in the period. Surdy fires through traffic. That never got through. Gagno picked up in the corner by Beaton. John Beaton sends it across to Surdy. Likes that spin move out of the off the half wall. Now Beaton again. Back to the point for Johnson. Feeds it towards the net. Bouncing puck. Trying to knock it out of the air with Seller. He gets popped from behind. Puck's back out to center ice. Broken up momentarily by Johnson. Moved in by Ritzkovian. Behind the net. Chase McInnes. One of the other, the other legacy on this, uh, or the NHL legacy, I should say, on this Northeastern team is Chase McInnes from Hingham, Mass. Sends it along, two on two into the zone. Miller tries a drop pass here. McInnes has it again. Hughes. Centering pass comes all the way through. McDonough just arrived a little bit late. That almost went in off hard ball skate. Chase McInnes, the son of Marty McInnes. So I wanted to finish that thought, but Hughes works his way in. Sent to the point on the far side for Harris. Fed down low, back to the blue line. There's Kisslin again. Again, he likes to pass, and that allows RPI to clear as the pass was off the mark. Harris with four seconds to go in the period. He'll think better of this and just hold on to the puck. That'll do it. For period number two, the Engineers and Tour Linden with the lone goal of the second period have the Engineers all square with number 18 Northeastern after 40 minutes of play. Well, you got Northeastern winning the first period, RPI winning the second period. 
And I say we're in for a dandy third coming up. <laughs> Just one power play in the game so far. It belongs to the Huskies. They generated three shots on it but couldn't beat Lyndon Marshall. So we are tied at one through two. We'll be back with the third period here on RPI TV and ESPN in just a bit. You're watching RPI Hockey.
RPI and Northeastern about to start period number three. All square at one apiece will be five skaters aside when the third period gets underway. Perilous Garris here with Dan Frigent on RPI TV and ESPN Plus. However you are finding us this evening, we wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. I oh. ate a lot of, did you eat a lot of food? I ate a lot of food. No, uh, not really. Not really? No. Took it easy. Yes. Yeah. I uh, I had more than normal, but I usually don't eat a lot, so. Right. Well, hopefully fans are sitting back. Yeah. In their chairs or in their couch. To be honest. warmed up turkey. If they're like me, they might be asleep, but that's okay. Not because of the hockey, just because of the, the time of day and the amount of food it consumed. Because you got leftovers. Yes, I try to avoid those turkey comas <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> okay. I don't mind them. <laughs> there was some bad football. The middle game was okay yesterday, but there was some bad football on yesterday. I tried to watch it. That Raiders game was exciting, but other than that, it was, wasn't a lot going on. This is shot down ice as we're underway here, third period. Levi will leave it behind. Shot around by Harris. And down ice it goes, beating out the icing McDonough. Trying to center it. That's broken up. Into the middle. Quick shot and a save. Real good chance there for McDonough from the slot. I don't know how uh, was it uh, Agri Jan has found him. Or was it uh, Ritzkovian? I couldn't tell. There's a chance the other way for RPI. And Lepinen is denied by Levi. What a nice save by oh. Levi. But what a great play to set that up. Give and go there. And that's after a big save by Marshall. We have one both ways. The, yeah, Marshall at the other end. And you were going to say how he found him. That was a no look pass. <laughs> that's when you tell lines have chemistry. Yeah, it was a. I was still recovering from the Northeastern chance, and RFI was back the other way. And a shot and a goal. My goodness, Novak. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh, jeez. Hey, he earned that one. I mean, if you can sneak one above a goaltender like that, uh, Marshall. I mean, what? He's down a little early. Look at, see, he gave it up right there. I mean, there. sure. Look at what? that. Look at that. Like, I mean, that's where, and, and I've talked about it, that's a perfect <laughs> example where if you're a butterfly goaltender, you've got to have that timing yeah. perfect. Otherwise, you give up that top shelf. I guess. I mean, that's, that is not him. That's not a goal scorer looking at that, thinking that that's open. <laughs> no. That's a goal scorer knowing what the goaltender is going to do. Yeah. That ho hopefully it opens up, and it did. I mean, if you put a stamp there, they send it back. <laughs> you can't mail something from with a stamp way up there. And that's sent back to center. See how the engineers respond, maybe a little bit. Shell shocked after both teams had real good chances. Better than that chance, to be honest, right? I mean, yeah. the, the previous two chances both ways were, were better scoring opportunities than whatever that was. But Yakov Novak scores his fifth goal of the season in some fashion. Seller will take a tight angle shot, because why not? That one hits off the glass and will be skated out to center. Well, not only is that a perfectly placed shot, it was on his backhand. Right, that's... That adds to it. There's a shot and a save by your guy Kislin. Chipped off the wall. He'll pick it up again. Julian Kislin sends it cross ice and all the way down. This is going to be icing on Northeastern. So early here in the third period, the Huskies retake the lead 2-1 to one on an impossible angle backhand from Novak. 35th career goal, and this is 102nd career game. He's a seventh round draft pick by the Ottawa Senators. You can tell why. He's a big kid. Yeah, he is. 6'3, 215. And like I said, he just put that hoping that the goaltender would do what he thought the goaltender would do, which would open up that space. 6'3, 215 is Novak. Not afraid to throw his body around, too. We've seen him throw some hits tonight. This is going to be no icing here. His spot will have to play. Given away to Dubinsky. 
Zach Dubinsky spins around in the corner, sends it back to the line for Hallbauer. Works it back down low for Walsh. He'd like to get his old buddies back as he goes to the ice, lost an edge. Flip back to center. Chelberg was lining up a hit on the uh, was that Bozzo, but it never came to fruition as the puck went free. Outs in, back to the point. Long shot goes wide from the blue line. That came from Harris. Chelberg steps away from a hit and ends up not touching the puck at all, but the engineers pick it back up, and McIsaac's going to beat out the icing here. Nice play by James McIsaac, sophomore from Winnipeg. Looking for his first collegiate point here in this, his second game. Here's a shot from the bottom of the circle. Got a lot on it, did Mella. And Marshall was there for the stop. Again, Lyndon Marshall, you hope that that 11-goal game he gave up against Cornell wasn't going to affect him, and he's played enough hockey to realize that you can put those kind of games behind you. Doesn't matter how many you give up, I think. Well, if you're going to move forward, and he's in a critical position. You have to be able to put that behind you and uh, look forward to the next shot, next game. Face-off win for the Huskies. That'll bounce right through. Linden steps around one Husky, but Fontaine's going to play here. Back behind the RPI net, Jack Agnew. He's wrapped up. Sent back to the line. Struble a shot blocked, and it hits the top of the net. It'll come to rest on top of the goal as Bowman blocked that shot, and that just had enough loft to land on top of the cage. And that you usually see that blown dead pretty quickly. I don't know if Everyone's, the referee knew no, where it was. Everyone starts chopping at it. <laughs> that can just leads to the... An issue. Well, it goes off to the defenseman it, in front. Yeah, it was blocked by Bowman, and it just lands on top of the goal. And Marshall doesn't know where it no, is. No, but everyone starts whacking it. Well, see, <laughs> Agnew's trying to put his glove on it. <laughs> <laughs> the whistle finally went. Nice job by Gagno to jump in on that draw. No one else wanted it. He did. Although it is flipped right back into the RPI zone. Linden leaves it for Hallbauer, but now he has to deal with Hughes. Novak. Spinning with it is Chapani back to the point. Kisslin a shot, knocked down. RPI has numbers if they want to go. It's Hallbauer. Near side for Seller. Seller across. One-time shot. Save made by Levi. Puck goes behind the goal. Thrown right back through, and this will leave the zone. Another great opportunity and another odd man rush. You'd think for a team that gives up as few goals as it does that Northeastern wouldn't give up so many of these chances, but they're they're just relying on on Levi a lot of the time here. Yeah, they that's why they they can take chances offensively and push the envelope at one end, knowing that he's at the goal at the other end. Look at look at that save. He gets over there real quick. He's in his butterfly. Protecting the lower part of the net. You've got to get that up top if you're going to be shooting from there with uh, Levi coming across on you. And the wraparound after that just went through the crease and out the other side. This will hop into the bench. And uh, you had RPI's defense being a little aggressive, being down a goal, so there was nobody at the point. Exactly five minutes gone here in the third period. Northeastern has scored the only goal this frame. Fontaine trying to go back across with it to McDonough. Not a bad idea. Trying to find your leading goal scorer, but just couldn't connect. Picked up on the other side, however. Ritzkovian and it was all tangled up with Johnson. That one goes through Harris, kept in by Miller as the two D-men switch places at the points. Surdy wrapped up by Ritzkovian. McDonough, a shot that's blocked. Right back down low with it. Here's McDonough again. Tried to leave it off for Fontaine, but he just jumps over it. 
And we're going to whistle on a puck played with a high stick. We'll stop things with 14-13 to go in the third. Engineers are out shooting the Huskies 19-18. But it is Northeastern with a one-goal lead here. I thought you could play that high stick to yourself, no? No. Okay. Had me thinking there. Yeah, you could, I'll say you could glove it to yourself, but you can do it to, in your own zone. Now you got me thinking about the NHL and, and college, which have different rules. I know, I get. Now I'm going to get emails about this, which I don't want, but I'll look up the rules on my own, thank you. <laughs> Louis, Louis Helson will flip it into McIsaac. No way. You get emails like that. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to put you on a spot more often. No, you really shouldn't. <laughs> I usually know what I'm talking about when it comes to the rules, I think. Anyway, here's Agnew. I think, I think I'm wrong. You can't, you can't knock hit. it down. No. no, no. No. Once it's a high stick and it's you a high. Other, the other, the team, other can team can play it. You That's can't it. play it to yourself. That's yes. it. End of story. No emails. Quick shot here goes wide of Marshall back out to neutral ice and Huskies have it again it's Kislin across see we just had to talk Spot. through it that's right just leave that one in the drafts Adamo chips it up the boards shot back in by Mella Agnew he's quickly pressured by a pair of Huskies and they strip the puck away outs it has it pinned against the wall? Someone's sitting on it now. And that's going to draw a whistle. <laughs> that's one way to break up a party. You sit on the puck. I think that's Johnson. No, it's Agnew. 12.48 left in regulation time. RPI trailing by a single goal. They have not led in this game. Late change by... Coach Smith didn't like the matchup. Gagno can surely provide some energy. We've only seen him a handful of times. He's got some speed. Back to the point by Chipani. Delayed offside here, and a touch of the puck will make it a full offside. Hmm, that didn't look out. Yeah, I don't know. This third period has kind of crawled along since the flurry we saw in the opening minute and a half or so, which saw the Huskies eventually take a lead. We had you know, great scoring chances both ways in the opening minute, and then almost a non-chance. I mean, if you're scoring that as a, one of the assistant coaches, that's, that's almost a non-chance, right? The backhander from no angle? Yeah. Those no-chance goals can be killers. One-timer from Chelberg off the glass behind the goal. Schreifel's trying to get there. Dragging a couple of Huskies along with him, but we get a penalty here. Maybe, uh -huh. or the, the, oh, the, the, the clip fell off again. Yep. The clip became unclipped. Yeah, well. As they were clipping along. It's, a, it's an old rink. It's better than the glass breaking. We've seen that a few times here. We've had the Zamboni door come loose. You missed it when the uh, the popcorn machine set off the fire alarm. <laughs> that was against Harvard a couple years ago. Really? And we had to evacuate. Yeah, we there was like a 45-minute delay. Everyone wow. everyone had to leave the building. So you had guys on uh, stick guards out in the parking lot. I went back to my office. I don't blame you. Finished the game. Yeah. Well, it started to smell, and then the alarm went off. Someone burned some popcorn. It's a notorious ECAC hockey game here. That's bad ventilation. <laughs> Maybe you could help him with that, Coach. <laughs> this clip is. Well, I don't think they got it on there. Why not? Let's let's play some more hockey here. Yeah. RPI football is in action tomorrow, Coach. They're heading out to Cortland for a round of 16 game. The, I like, sweet, the sweet 16. I like their position, too. They're the underdog, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the best, best. For probably the third time this year they're the underdogs. They're probably yep. un probably underdogs against Ithaca, even though that was a uh, 
a home game. Looks like RPI's offside here. And they were definitely underdogs at Union for the Dutchman Shoes. They won that, so why not? Why not play spoiler or whatever you want to call it? I guess it's not spoiler if you're advancing. Anyway, puck moved back to the point for Miller. Quick shot and a save. Rebound chance. Never got to Marshall. Fontaine works it back to Miller nicely. McDonough snaps it back to the top of the zone. Poked away from Fontaine, who lost his stick. Chipped in. Seller trying to get there, and he can't. As good back check there. Miller got back into position. Gunnar Wolf Fontaine had lost his stick, and it turned into almost a, a two on a half as he was the last man back, but the engineers couldn't quite connect with the pass. Now it's stolen away again by Seller. Has a man breaking. It's a Damo. Alex just dump it in. I think that's true in all sports. Yeah. The most difficult game to win is the one you're supposed to. Oh, for sure. Especially this late in the season where there really is no, right? Everyone's yeah. playing well. How can you really be a favorite? I mean, you can, but everyone's confident. Here's Adamo. Slips through his stick. Yeah, if you've won a playoff game or a playoff series, you have to be feeling, good, feeling pretty good about yourself, no matter who you are. Here is Helson. You just can't have the, ap the attitude that you're happy to be there. You want to finish it. Oh, absolutely it. not. No. Got to finish it. Well, luckily for this RPI football group, many of them have been further than the round of 16. They lost to Hopkins in 2018 in the Elite Eight. There's a loose puck at center. Chelberg, the D-man's flies ahead. Chelberg, a shot save. A rebound pops away. Good chance there for the RPI defenseman. On a breakaway. You don't see a ton of those. The Mellis is shot that goes wide. It was tipped off an RPI stick. Tie up in the corner. That would have been something had he uh, <laughs> had he beat uh, Levi. Simon doesn't look like the fastest guy all the time, but you put some open ice in front of anybody, <laughs> and you'll see what extra gear they have. With a puck. <laughs> exactly. Right, exactly. All, all, of, like all, a, all of a sudden, the, the, the rink is... Slanted like a carrot. Yeah, and there's a icing here on RPI, so referee can get rid of his stick. He's been carrying a stick around here. Maybe he wants to carry it for the rest of the game. Tyler Loftus, another look at the breakaway coach. He didn't get a lot on the shot, Shelberg. He was pressured in the end by Kislin, who kind of forced him to shoot that earlier than he wanted to, I think. Although I'm not sure. Simon Chelberg's going to make a, a stick handle move in that case, but you never know. Well, that's a good example of not overhandling the puck. Right. At least get that shot away. Exactly. It is better than the alternative of not shooting. That one hits off of McIsaac, uh, and now there's a big hit on the far side by Herman. Chopped at by Chelberg. Agnew. McIsaac. Coming up on nine minutes to go here in regulation. Snapped across to Agnew. Now James McIsaac into the attacking zone. Pulls it back. Takes a shot. That's blocked. Second try goes wide by Walsh. And now it's McIsaac again. Trying to twist away from Outson. And that's broken up. Fed to the wall. McIsaac. Trying to throw it back to Herman. It's broken up. And now a chance to break the other way. They are onside. No, they're not. That was awfully close. That was uh, Bozzo, who was adamant that he was onside. I, I couldn't tell from my angle. We'll take another look at it. He might have been just ahead of the puck. E wow, that's close. Because remember, it's the trail leg at the top of the blue yeah. line. That it was very looked, close. Yeah. I, I can see what the linesman saw. So with that, we will have our midway point stoppage. 8.42 to go in the third period. 2-1 to one, Northeastern with the lead.
a chance to see Levi's mid-period uh, ritual. He's accomplished quite a bit already. Uh, just a sophomore here for Northeastern. But anyone who's on the Canadian World Junior team is an instant star, especially in their home country. And especially if you can bring home the gold. Puck shot in, and now Rifles chops at it. Big hit on Dubinsky. Penalty coming up. Across for Hallbauer a drive. And RPI is going to go on the power play for the first time with 8.08 to go here in the third. That's going to be Hughes for a slash, right? I don't know where it is. There's the push. That's weird. Slash? How? I don't understand that one. Just looking at that replay, I thought it was for the body check. Well, somehow I forgot that the U.S. won the gold in the World Juniors. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> well, he made it to the gold, 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 gold medal game, I should say. So that, that's pretty good. Yeah, and I, I don't think it was close, was it? It was 2 nothing. Yeah. Beating the shots and a save by Levon. Well, I'm glad I figured that out by myself again <laughs> for the same reasons as before. <laughs> Nobody would have known. No, well, unless you watch the World Junior Championships and are yelling at your television. He's out and square to the puck, top of the paint. My point still stands. He's very good. <laughs> Well, he came out of nowhere. Yeah. Puck out to center. RPI will have to reset here. Just the first power play chance. The engineers haven't had a ton of power play chances compared to their opponents this year. This is the 42nd power play opportunity. Opponents have had 55 now. Well, Northeastern is 90% on the PK, so yeah. they're pretty decent themselves. The guy at the back end doesn't hurt. Bouncing puck kept in nicely by Chelberg. He's had quite a game. Snapped across to Beaton. Comes off the boards. He'll send it down low. 108 left on the power play here. Tour Linden has RPI's lone goal so far. Skating around, trying to feed it down low. It was broken up. RPI keeps it alive, and now it's sent out. Under seven to go in regulation. Jake Johnson will start the breakout here. RPI was 0 for on Long Island, but they were 3 for 5 against the Sharks of LIU. Uh, last Friday, everyone stops at the line. Somehow that works out for Walsh, although they immediately turn it over. Back the other way is DeMellis, and he'll just dump it in. 20 seconds to go in the power play. Walsh took his eye off of that one, sent back in. Johnson has it. It's amazing how uh, PP can be so cyclical, hot and cold at times. Oh, yeah. Dubinsky, and hits a skate. That's kind of how this power play is gone. You get one pass, and then the next one hits off of something, and you got to start over again. So the power play is over. RPI 0 for 1. Adamo skating with it. This will move all the way out to center ice again. Adamo will try another lap here. This time he chips it in. Bushler avoids a hit from Adamo. Kislin up the boards. We got a hand pass. Puck played with a high stick again. They like that call tonight. Yep. It'll end up in RPI zone since it was played by an RPI player. 5.44 to go. Shots are 22-19. Kind of fits the mold of how RPI has played games this year for the most part. 
Low shots for and against. So now they're going to put the face off at center ice. Okay. Why not? RPI averages almost 29 shots per game, and they give up fewer than 24 shots per game. And this game is right in line with that. Which if you can if you can give up fewer than 24, 25 shots a game, you'll be in most games. No question. The key is scoring in, right. those, in those games. And the engineers we talked about at the top of the game, top of the broadcast, are in jeopardy of not scoring two goals for the first time this year. And we knew that might be the case. We thought it might be a low-scoring game with this Northeastern team in the building. Purely for are their defensive prowess and their goaltender. This is on the side of the net. It'll be pinned against the base of the goal by Levi. They got their first goal on a rebound, and you have to think it's going to be traffic or something that's going to create yep. a second goal. Levi likes to put his stick in between his leg and his pad while he gets some water, and then he'll pull it out. He'll skate into the corner. <laughs> Except he was talking he, to the yeah, refs, so that, he didn't have time to do it. He was it. distracted, maybe. Yep. <laughs> the draw was coming a little quicker, too. Face-off win here, RPIs. Chelber, quick shot. That one stopped in front. Beaton trying to jam it home, and he's been hog-tied, and we got a penalty coming up. As John Beaton was just being roughed in the slot, it's going to be a hold, or in the crease, rather. That's a good play by John Beaton, just trying to get in there, and he got on the right side of his man, and that's where the penalty came. Well, you know. Ritz Covian. Yeah, yeah. He, just gra he was gra <laughs> grabbing yeah. his head. I don't know <laughs> if that was necessary. But, uh, but it looked like uh, goaltender interference by a Beaton. A little he, bit, yeah. Yeah, he took out, uh, and I think that's what the Northeastern coach Keefe is yelling right yeah. now. You're probably right. Ritz Covian was just maybe standing up for his goalie. Yes. And he's talking to the official. Uh, he's out of camera, but Levi's talking to the official about it right now. So another door has opened here for RPI. A second power play chance. Face-off win. Chelberg has it, working it down low. Snap right back to Linden. Poke to the line, but a breakaway shorthanded. It's Novak walking in. Novak a shot saved by Marshall. Nice save. Critical part of the game. Point of the game. It looked like Novak was trying to go five-hole on him. Nice job by Marshall to cover up the lower half there. RPI trying to set up again after a near disaster at the other end of the ice. Seller has it chopped away. Lepinen back for Seller. Sends it back to Lepinen. Here's Chelberg. He had a breakaway opportunity moments ago. Now a shot was partially blocked. Picked up Lepinen trying to backhand it in front for Beaton. It'll be cleared out. Yeah, Lepinen knew he had beaten on the back door wide open. Tried to get it to him. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. But if RPI ever wanted their power play to click, that would be the time. Here is Walsh. RPI trying to complete a change here of its power play unit. T.J. Walsh, former Northeastern Husky. Rung in, takes a hop off the glass, and sits right in the slot. It'll be cleared down by... Uh, Angry at John at, uh, Janice. That was quite the bounce off the glass. Yeah, we've seen that before. That's the old Zamboni door. Usually it happens down along the ice, but that time caught up high. Now Adamo trying to jam it in. Another crack at it, and smothering it is Levi. I don't think Adama realized how much time he had. Yeah, there. he had more than that. Yeah, he was wide open. Look at that. Yeah. He smartly moved to his forehand. And then he lost He it. lost the puck, yeah. yeah. He never got the shot off, really. The defenseman, Miller, was just lying there. <laughs> Trying to get in the way. 15 seconds to go in the power play. And the Huskies dig it out of the pile and shoot it down. 
Well, now Coach Smith will be thinking, okay, when does Marshall come to the bench? Adamo shot it into the bench. He was trying to shoot it off the boards, of course, and we'll draw a neutral zone faceoff here. And we need a new puck. These two teams are back in action on Sunday at Matthews in Boston. It's been a while since RPI was there. I think I might have been there for that trip. It was October 15th, 2010. I think I was there. Okay, I lost in overtime. No, it was a 2-2 tie. Here's a quick shot and a save by Marshall. <coughs> Puck in the corner. Trying to turn with it is McDonough. Back towards the point and leaves the zone. Bushler shoots it back in. Huskies have to touch up. Agnew back for Hallbauer. RPI very deliberate here in the closing stages of this game. Marshall's going to follow his D-man out to center ice and go off here. Shot around, trying to break out to center. Hops right to Chelberg, who's now the last line of defense. Lepinen dumps it into the far corner. Bowman knocks it out of the sky, and they're going to call him for high stick. I don't know. What was he thinking? I uh, th it's a, it's a see the puck, uh, hit the puck type situation, I think, Coach. Uh, yeah, but just let it come to you because nobody else is around you, and then you just protect it, wait for support. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying, but I think he just, I think your natural reaction is to play it. And now he heads off. <laughs> well, I can't have six on yet. Right off the draw, Walsh trying to walk his way in. Marshall heads to the bench again. And towards the empty net, it's going to go wide. And it's going to be icing. <laughs> Hughes, who would figure he'd be <laughs> taking that one? Well, there's a chance. Yep. They don't ask how. <laughs> That's Steve Winwood when, when you see a chance? Take it. Yeah. You're a Steve Winwood guy. Yeah. Timeout RPI. All right. Timeout RPI. 138 to go. Engineers take a timeout here. Six on five hockey with a minute 38 left. This has been just about what we expected as far as how this gone has gone. Right, Coach? Yes. yes. Close I mean, game? Yeah, close game. Both teams are pretty, pretty strong defensively. I mean, when you really think about it, you know, you've got Northeastern that's got a lot of firepower, you know, to hold them to two goals. Yeah. Just Mar Marshall's on his game. It's one of those games where you have a – a national figure come in as far as the goaltender Levi's concerned yeah. with the numbers he's got. And, hey, you don't want him to be the story. You're going to up your game. And I think that uh, Lyndon Marshall's done that tonight. Yeah, not to hearken too much back to that road trip out west where they lost to Colgate 5-2 and Cornell 11-3. It's just nice to see RPI, you know, playing the way that they know they can against another top team. I know Cornell was ranked, Northeastern, you know, another top 20 club. Almost to prove to yourself that you're a better team than that. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's important. Well, those are the games you leave in the rear of your mirror. For sure. No, I'm just saying, like, just as far as the overall psyche is saying, yeah. we can yeah. play with these type teams. That was more of a fluke than the way we had been playing and the way we are playing. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, like, and I've said it lots, and I'll continue to say it, you know, each season is peaks and valleys. Not only do you go through it as a team, but you go through it as an individual as well. But there's a reason why you're playing a Division One sport, and, this is a long time out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Did he buy two more minutes? I don't know. Final words from assistant coach Chuck Weber. 
Wait, was it, does, a, does the penalty box not usually blow the horn after the minute? you think it would. The penalty box is also open. Oh, they're looking at something. The referees yeah, are looking. They're in the, they're in the scorer's box right now. Well, I saw Coach Smith say something to the official when he called his timeout. I don't know what they could be looking at. Uh, well, if I were going to think about it, it would be <laughs> to put more time on the clock to okay. see if it's the right Okay, time. well, yeah, I guess, yeah. That's the only thing that could have happened. But I didn't know that that was reviewable. <laughs> well, let's see. It was 138 when we finished things, and I think we're going to – we need our fourth referee on the or our fourth official on the ice. There he is. Joe's back. We can play. One thirty-eight to go. Empty net to our right. Off the draw, Beaton back to the point for Chelberg. Gives it back to John Beaton. Down low to Linden. Back to Chelberg. Sends it across. Johnson snaps it all the way to Beaton. Now Chelberg finds a lane, takes a shot, loose underneath one of the defenders in front, and Beaton throws it back to the point. Chelberg down low off a stick out of play. That's a long pass to get down to Lepinen in the corner without a Northeastern stick coming out and taking away that passing lane, which happened by the defenseman there, number 12, Miller. I mean, it's kind of a catch-22, right? Like, you want to... Move the puck across ice as fast as possible to keep the goalie's feet moving, get him out of position. But So you want to make those passes tighter and closer, but at a certain point, a long pass is going to beat someone, right? Yes. <laughs> That's the answer I wanted to hear. Puck behind the goal, stolen away. But I'm not so sure I'd be looking for long yeah. passes right. in the end of a period when there's, you know, it's not perfect ice out there. Linden gets it deep, works it up the wall while being checked to Beaton. Nice play there by Tour. Now Chelberg, a long shot, saved by Levi. Loose in the circle, and it pops free. Linden back up top. Johnson across. One-time shot, loose in front, and fanning on it was Beaton, and he takes a stick up high. Loose in the slot, and it's going to be cleared out towards the empty net and wide. It'll be icing. Yeah, John Beaton found himself in an awkward spot, and I think he took a, a stick, but tough to get that call, I guess, if you're on one knee. He had the wide open net again. He did, no, I right here, look. Watch him, watch him take do. this, watch him take this stick right there. Oh, yep. Yeah. But no, it wasn't even that, it was just under his arm. Yeah. But it looked like it stung him. You know, in those situations, you just gotta play for that open pocket. Yeah, I mean, that was the chance you wanted. Yes, and and he made the right play because as the puck was shot towards the net, he started closing the gap and taking right. the space in front of him, which, and and for some reason, that, that got away on him. Yeah, I saw that wrong. I thought he took a stick to the to the head, but it was actually just under his arm, and it looked like it just st uh, stung him or stunned him a little bit there. As he was trying to get to that. It reminded me of the play that he had back uh, last Friday for the hat trick. Where he's yes. on that back door and he just kind of fanned on it. Yep. At that point, it was meaningless as far as the game was concerned, but he was on a hat trick after scoring his first two career goals in the same game at the end of that game against the, the Sharks, which was well, fully in hand at that point, 7-2. to two. But here, RPI trying to pull even, and then they've looked good again on the 6-on-5. Generating chances. We'll see if they have one more in them here. Well, with the exception of uh, Hallbauer, everybody's a left shot on there. So you got five lefties and one righty. Isn't Big faceoff here. Push back to the corner. Huskies trying to clear. Glove down by Hallbauer, and it's a hand pass, and that's unfortunate for RPI as the puck will face off will leave the zone. It was a good idea by Kyle to set that down as quickly as he could. Unfortunately for him, he was the next one to touch it. So now you have to have zone entry into the formula here for RPI.
Faceoff pushed into the zone. Kicked at by Adamo. Just trying to get it deep here. Trying to spin it back to the point. Finds Surdy. Surdy back down low with nine. Walsh lost it in his skates, and it's cleared down the ice. And wide of the net with two. And a whistle with point nine. Well, one thing for certain. <laughs> Northeastern's got to practice shooting the puck the length of the ice into an open net. The engineers have an, a couple of real long empty netters this year. <laughs> Back Laka's got one. Yeah. yeah. He used to practice that a lot, though, right? At the end of practice or yes. whatever? Yeah. Actually, we had a drill where you had to uh, come across the red line and take a shot mm -hmm. and hit the net. And if you missed the net, then you had to, everybody had to start over again. <laughs> but that was a, that was a yeah. strategic drill because you'd end up doing it for a long time. All right, so the puck has to, they want to look at the time again. <laughs> They're verifying that it is .9. Coach Smith wanted them to look at it again. So this has to go in the net in one second, and it doesn't. Nearly impossible with that much time on the clock. And RPI takes a tough luck 2-1 defeat here to number 18 Northeastern. It was a well-played game. It was tied for large portions of it. Northeastern got that third period goal. On really a non-chance, Yakov Novak scoring his fifth goal of the season. That was the decider here on a backhand shot from nearly no angle that somehow found its way over the shoulder of Lynn Marshall in the top right corner of the net. And that's the difference as Northeastern picks up its 10th win of the year. They're now 10-4 and 1. RPI is now 6-6 six, six and 2 on the year. Coach? Well, I think they got a lot to, I mean, it was a pretty evenly played uh, contest, you know, and mm -hmm. you've got RPI, a little bit of a drought here on the power play, which would have made a difference. But, uh, you know, hey, they, they played a strong game and just a matter of one shot on goal. Well, that'll do it for us here at the Houston Fieldhouse for all of our RPI TV crew. That was Dan Fridge and I'm Perilous Garris. We thank you for Watching tonight's game, your final score once again was number 18, Northeastern 2, RPI 1. This has been RPI Hockey on RPI TV and ESPN.